So hi everyone, I just wanted to do a quick introduction to the economics in Turkey. Um, it's been a really interesting country for me um, just to study um, as kind of a contrast and a gateway um, out of Europe and into uh, the Middle East and even Africa. Um, so now basically the real interest here is that um, how does Turkey uh, fit in uh, with uh, basically everything? Um, but particularly um, Africa and the Middle East and also all of Europe. Um, so when you think about it, um, Turkey is actually a huge country um, and uh, basically it has a huge economy as well. Um, so basically just wanted to uh, study that uh, here. Uh, so just one last thing here to kind of look at um, kind of if you notice here there's kind of this uh, green area along the top here and then kind of this uh, same kind of area going through here now I'm not sure if the climate is the same like that but uh, let's see you can kind of let's take off the legend here so you can kind of see there's this area through here um, and when you switch this off you can kind of see going on with the climate there but so the uh you know obviously the economics of some of these areas is at an extremely high level is uh related to what uh, the climate's like um you know a lot of people want to live and work in the same kinds of areas so you can kind of see if we uh zoom in here you kind of see some of this and uh yeah so basically just to give a basic idea there um, so I kind of want to start uh, looking at Turkey from this uh, perspective. Um, so you can kind of see, um, you know, basically Europe here. Sorry, it's kind of on the horizon. Um, but uh, uh, basically what you kind of notice here is as you kind of uh, start to look at uh, Europe in its entirety, this whole area is Turkey. Um, and it's basically huge. Um, so um, it's not really part of Europe in the sense that it's kind of got this a gateway city here, Istanbul, um, which um, from what I understand is basically the largest city in all of Europe, excluding, um, you know, basically some cities that you wouldn't really consider in Europe, um, like Moscow. So, or even, uh, you know, down here uh, in Cairo. So um, basically it's, uh, you know, one of the largest cities in this whole area, um, but it's kind of on the edge here. Um, and it's also got uh, some really interesting land. Um, so um, perhaps most of the best places to live in Europe are in the Mediterranean. And certainly, um, you know, uh, here in Turkey, there's a lot of coastline. Um, and then also, uh, you know, Greece is over here, Italy and uh, kind of the, uh, 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 Spain and France coast, um, but basically North Africa is a huge amount of the Mediterranean here. Um, and uh, for that matter, uh, Turkey is uh, very important because it's kind of a little bit greener here, as you can see, um, and uh, just really important place to understand. Um, so one of my favorite overlays here um, is this climate uh, overlay uh, you can download. And um, it basically just loads right into Google Earth. Um, so one of the reasons that I was particularly interested in uh, basically Turkey was because of this. So the climate, um, you know, basically that kind of the Mediterranean climate um, before there was kind of like that California climate. Actually, it was originally called a friend of mine said it's kind of the Mediterranean climate. So that uh, kind of like Italian coastline, uh, Greece. Um, you know, uh, basically like 70 degrees year round kind of temperatures. Um, that actually to a large extent is in a Turkey here. Um, and then parts of like North Africa and Spain. Um, it does get cold um, kind of up in the mountains here um, in the Alps and so on. Um, you can see even parts of uh, Northern Turkey here. Um, but it's just interesting just to see um, this kind of like uh, local climate map. Um, just to kind of, uh, you know, basically understand uh, what's going on um, and also, also how that kind of heads into the Middle East here. Um, so um, I'm really not sure uh, how to go about this, but uh, perhaps the easiest way to get going on studying the uh, 
Turkey economy is just to look at the uh, currency. Um, and uh, their currency is called the lira here. Um, you can kind of see what uh, one of these guys look like. Um, kind of a funny looking guy, but uh, anyway, so, but this is the currency. So it's basically about here, you can see in the right, and it's changing uh, live right now, but um, basically it's 7.86 to one, right? So $1 gets you about eight or so of these, and it's been getting worse, um, f at least from the Turkish perspective. Um, and I just highlighted a couple key points here. So you can kind of see that things were getting, so down means that, um, so this is back here around two or even one and a half. So that means it was almost one to one. So basically it went from like one to one uh, up to about eight uh, to one, which is not good. So that problem started around here, you could say, right? So uh, July, August of 2008. So uh, if you're really gonna be a buff and study all these uh, details, um, basically that would be kind of the area. Um, and then on the bottom here, I have a price uh, oscillator. Um, so you can kind of see uh, the highs and the lows um, from a relative. So there's kind of these three little humps of problem areas. Um, and then these lows indicate uh, Basically, it's uh, you know better for the Turkey economy. Um, so you want to kind of see like a relatively flat uh, stable. So you see like stable from 2005 up until about uh, 2012. This is the other way to look at it. Um, and uh, that area was kind of stable for both the U.S. economy and the Turkish economy. Um, but this kind of gives you an idea. Um, there was like a big uh, revaluation, or I, I think they. I'm not even sure what happened with the currency. I think they bailed on it or something. But um, so right now the big question is, you know, with uh, uh, Turkey being so close to uh, Europe, um, will they use the euro? Or um, the other interesting idea would be, could it be smarter for Turkey to help the entire Middle East and kind of do their own uh, currency, uh, like uh, Middle Eastern currency? And um, that is uh, perhaps a, in my opinion, a better option. It's kind of nice to have different currencies. Not everyone use the euro. And in some ways, um, Turkey is kind of on the edge of Europe. Um, but uh, but yeah, so it's just to kind of give you an overview here of what's going on with the currency. Um, so before we get into all the economics, I just want to say I was able to download um, this thing called a GeoTIFF, which is a population density. Um, it's not perfect. It's not working perfect. I'll show you kind of what that looks like here. I'll transition. So basically, once you import that into Google Earth, you can get a map that looks like this. And these are kind of the populated areas. You can change the opacity of it to kind of see um, essentially where the people are. Um, so this gets you a better idea for uh, basically Europe um, and really the whole world. And you can kind of see India off here with just a ton of people. Um, but you can compare uh, and just start to see uh, what's going on in Turkey. So you can kind of see, um, you know, this populated region and then over here and then their capital here. Um, as well as the rest of the Middle East and kind of see the population uh, perspective for that. So uh, this was really helpful. Um, I'm a big believer in kind of uh, understanding everything about the economy, including uh, population. So you can kind of see here um, basically what that means. Uh, so again, here's kind of a zoomed in version of this. So you can kind of see um, it's just really interesting. Uh, to be honest, uh, I've seen some really hilariously awesome videos of uh, people flying couches uh, on. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, there's like a little place called Esmir here, and it's pretty populated. You can kind of see the the areas here, um, but uh, I don't even know if this is the area. I think they kind of uh, do a lot of. Uh, uh, I forgot what it like kite sailing or something. Um, but uh, it's pretty cool. There's a little town out in here. So, and there's another town over here as well. And, and so on, you can kind of keep zooming out and kind of see. Um, so actually, um, I kind of take back what I said before, but there's a lot of people in Istanbul. But uh, as you look at the bigger picture, you can kind of see that, um, well, there's a lot of people, a lot of places. Um, 
and uh, but uh, but certainly um, certainly it's high density in here in Istanbul. So um, and uh, uh, yeah, and you can kind of see there's just a ton of different areas, and all these areas would be interesting to study, um, particularly along the coast. I would say. Um, about the economy and then like if you're interested in kind of how uh, turkey works with the middle east uh, maybe looking into this beirut area lebanon and so on and even looking out into uh how they interact with greece um uh, maybe through uh, some areas in here and uh, as you zoom out you can kind of see uh how the economy fits into uh basically the mediterranean and the rest of the earth um, but uh, super interesting um, just to start with a population map to uh, kind of give you some ideas of what's going on uh, in terms of uh, Turkey's population. Uh, so we just finished up looking at the uh, currency there. Um, and uh, this is the name of their uh stock exchange and kind of how i got interested in this and kind of as a disclaimer is i have tried to invest in some companies in turkey and they're super interesting um because they interact with like say north africa the rest of the middle east and uh europe obviously um but uh this is the name of their stock exchange um abbreviated bist or uh they have some different names on trading view uh they call it uh this guy here uh, XU100, I believe. And in the fine print, you can read down here, it's basically 100 companies listed uh, the top uh, by highest volume and um, uh, market volume, except these investment companies. So basically, it's the companies. Um, and uh, we'll try to uh, look at that here. So I put this on a log graph and you can kind of see what's been going on. So a lot of, a uh, lot of, really fast changes right and then the you know the world economy dropped you can't really see much of a drop here you do i mean it's significant but uh in 2001 with uh the crash um and then kind of a steady increase here and then another drop around 2007 which also faced the world economy as well so and then kind of like more of a flat area and you don't really even see a drop um relative to these other drops for a uh, coronavirus which is interesting um, to think about um, in general. Anyway, I uh, hope you've really enjoyed uh, this discussion about Turkey. Um, there's a lot more to study. I would say take a look at um, a list of companies in Turkey. There's actually a couple different links um, on Wikipedia. Um, they also have another page called list of companies listed on the Istanbul Stock Exchange. So at the bottom there, you can see the BIST 100, and then there's like uh, basically the a list of maybe 30 or 40 of these um, that have been on there for a while. So the, one of the problems is you could get on or off the uh, list of 100, um, but have you been on there for a while, um, and so on. Um, so uh, basically, take a look at the BIST 100. Um, there's uh, some interesting companies. I've even tried to put a little bit of money, um, you know, 10 bucks or so but uh and uh you can maybe even trade it for free uh on these adrs and so on but uh but yeah just uh take a look at some of those and uh, i'll hopefully try to get a little bit more some other time